We're going to try to conquer the world. The first one said, watch. And he went around to everybody in the world and he whispered in their ear, there is no God. And while there were some people who lived that way, deep down in people's hearts, they knew that this was a lie. And so this demon was not very successful. The second one said, I'll I'll try a different way. And he went and whispered in everyone's ears, there is no sin. And again, while there were certainly some people who lived as if that were the case, deep down in people's hearts they knew when they were acting in ways that distanced themselves from God's love. And so this demon too was not very successful. The third demon, however, was far craftier than the other two. He went around the world and whispered in people's ears, there is no hurry, and he was far more successful. Brothers and sisters, we all uh, procrastinate as part of our normal lives, right? All you have to do is walk through my garage, walk through our homes, look through our calendars or our reminders on our phone, and there's always those things that we say to ourselves, I'll get to that, Uh, you know, today's just not the day, I'm not going to deal with it. And that's normal. We all have lots of things on our plates and we have to prioritize. And certain things like cleaning out the garage just don't quite rise to that level of importance. But in today's readings, both from the epistle and the gospel, we're confronted with a question. Do we procrastinate in our spiritual lives? How responsive are we to the call that God gives us? Do we ever find ourselves, for example, at the end of a day saying, I'm tired, I'll pray tomorrow. Or, I've been staring at a screen all day, my eyes are tired, I'll read the Bible tomorrow. I know that I need to go and ask forgiveness of somebody that I've hurt, but I just don't feel like I have the energy for that right now, I'll do it later. The world, in response to this impulse that we have, presents us with a certain partial wisdom, you could say. Uh, There's a famous quote from Muhammad Ali, live every day as if it's your last, and someday you'll be right. Uh, But St. Paul responds to this with the full truth. What St. Paul tells us is, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. What day is it that he's referring to, though? It's not just today. When he says the day, when we read the day in the Bible and in the fathers of the church and the hymns that we sing, the day is the day of the kingdom, the day of our salvation, the day of resurrection that we sing on Pascha. At the end of the doxology, before liturgy most Sundays, we sing Simeron uh, Soteria, right? Today is salvation come to the world. This is the day that St. Paul is referring to. What he's telling us, brothers and sisters, is that eternity begins now. The kingdom is now. Father began this liturgy with those prophetic words, blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever. We stand every day that we live by virtue of our baptism. We hear the call of Christ and he asks us to enter the kingdom today. We are called to respond to that call the way that the apostles did today. Christ sends them out to go fishing one last time. Try again. He wants to show them His power. And they have the best day of fishing of their entire life. They have an enormous catch. And He calls them to follow Him now. I don't know about you, but my response probably would have been, let me get these fish to market. (laughs) Let me clean up everything. Let me get this biggest fishing day of my life to the market 
and then I'll follow. We'll talk tomorrow. But that's not what the apostles do. They respond. They know that now salvation has come to them. This is the day of their salvation. And they leave everything and follow him. St. Peter reminds us of that later in the gospel. He says, Lord, we have left everything for you. They dropped it and went and responded. Well, we're not called necessarily, very few of us at least, to leave behind our home, our job, our normal way of life, and to follow him in an extraordinary, out-in-the-desert kind of way. So how can we do this? Well, I think that there are two very simple things that if we apply in our life, we'll find radically transform it. The first, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that we can do is, uh, as soon as our eyes open, make the sign of the cross and say the words that we heard just before the small entrance. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Recognize that this day is a gift from God. We've been given this day. It wasn't promised us. And yet, he's given it to us in his love for us. And it's for us to make the most of it, to enter his kingdom today. Then, at the end of our day, before we go to sleep, we don't have to take long, but take just a moment, review our day, think about the ways in which we did not respond to the call to enter the kingdom, the ways in which we did not live in the day of salvation that day and ask God for forgiveness. Don't wait, don't put it off. Ask forgiveness now. And then take a moment to thank him for all the ways in which the kingdom broke through, those rays of light into our day today. What we'll find is that when we do this, living each day as the gift from God that it is, and leaving nothing undone in terms of our accounting with God at the end of the day, asking forgiveness of our failings and thanking him for his many blessings that day, we'll find that we live in peace. We have complete peace in our heart because we have nothing left unsaid or undone for that day between us and God. And so brothers and sisters, let us listen to the call that St. Herman gave to his spiritual children as we go through each of our days. He says to us, from this day forth, from this very hour and this very minute, let us love God above all and seek to accomplish his holy will. Amen.